popular belief is that car drivers are not so friendly and I sort of second that opinion with the kind of encounters that I've had. For example, the first Thar test mule that I ever shot, the driver tried to run me off the road and then the daily encounters that I have with bullies on the road who think they own the road just because they are driving a Thar. Of course, like any rule, there are exceptions to this one as well. And you will also find off-road enthusiasts, people who genuinely love the Thar heritage or love what the Thar stands for. Those kind of people also buy the Thar. And now there is a new Thar, the Thar Rocks. And chances are that you will usually find friendlier people in this variant. Because you see, this is the one with the five doors. This is the family rated Thar. But it's still a Thar, which means it needs to go off the road. So before I hop into the rear seat and tell you more about it, let's take it on the rougher stuff. Meet the Thar Rocks, a name that sounds straight out of the Yahoo chatroom days. To avoid rivaler impersonation, it's quotes are grill inspired by mm, six-pack abs. Though with angular headlights and the Armada name, it might have rocked an even stronger image, methinks. But function speaks louder than form here. And the Rocks delivers with its new 4x4 system featuring an electronic locking differential an interlinker function for making tight U-turns and also a crawl function which we got a demo of on some seriously slushy terrain. So we are going to demonstrate now what the Intelli turn feature works like. You need to be in one of the terrain modes, sand, snow or uh, mud. That We are going to be in mud because we are in a slushy area. You need to be in four low as well and then you need to activate that function using the switch on the dashboard. Now without it, it's going to do a much, much longer turning radius. But with it, the turning radius is going to be tighter. So how is it doing that? Essentially, it is using the slip control. So it is going to add traction to the front wheels whenever required. It's also going to break the inner rear wheel to keep on tightening that turning radius, cutting it short. And that is how it's going to help you. So one, you don't need to do those three point turns. And two, if you're on a trail, jungle trail, you need to come to that really tight U-turn or something. We all know it can become hairy in a long wheelbase vehicle like this, right? But here, even with the longer wheelbase, almost as much as a Scorpio N, it will do it much nicer and much tighter than a Scorpio N. Let's take a look. Notice how without it, it overshot the cone and with it, it was right in between those two tight cones. So that shows you how well this function works. Again, a function that we've seen something similar like this on a very expensive car, the Lexus or even a Land Cruiser. And now you can have that in a car. The next thing that we're going to look at is the crawl control function that they have. So here it is essentially going to vector torque amongst different wheels. So for now, we have turned it off. You are in normal mode. There's no crawl control on. And what you'll see is that the wheels just keep spinning on a difficult obstacle like this. It just keeps spinning. We are stuck. Technically, we are stuck. I can only feel the wheel spinning. You can see it as well. Now we're going to enable the crawl function, right? And that again works only with four low. And now essentially what it's going to do is it's going to crawl out of the situation, right? So it's vectoring torque. It is applying brakes wherever necessary, applying acceleration wherever necessary. So only on the wheels where there is traction, it's going to give it the power, right? And that is how it's going to uh, come into play. So here you have the electronic locking differential at work. You have the brake locking differential at work. All of this is working together to crawl the vehicle out of the tricky situation. And it just works. Now this was the crawl control working in slush, but how does it work on the rocks? Now let's take a look at that as well. Here you will also see the kind of approach and departure angles that this vehicle has despite its long wheelbase. The brake over angle is also pretty good. And then of course this is a proper SUV, so the ground clearance is quite generous as well. Now these are not the kind of rocks that you will want to encounter every now and then, right? But should you come to a situation like this, this is how the Thar easily manages all of that. You see here, 
the wheels are not necessarily in the air right so it's not the same as going over those articulation courses so here again it's going to figure out which wheel has the maximum traction and then nicely play along and make sure that the torque vectoring is happening properly the brake vectoring is also happening properly and then you are just crawling over it all so all of that is again coming into play let me remind you again you need to be in four mode for this Now usually cars that are great at off-roading like this, they translate to a bit of a underwhelming response when it comes to driving on tarmac. Like for example, slow steering and brakes that we saw with the Jimny or a lot of noises filling into the cabin from the tires, wind, etc. Even in expensive off-roaders like the Jeep Wrangler. Thankfully, the Thar Rocks addresses all of that quite nicely. Talking about the steering. The responses aren't too slow. There is an electric power steering. It is a system that is sort of taken or borrowed from the Scorpio N, but also tuned to suit the Thar a lot better. It also sits closer. The rack also sits closer to the wheels, and that essentially uh, gives you better feedback. Especially when driving off the road, you want that better feedback to come in. You want to know what's happening at the front wheels, so it enhances that feedback a little bit better. And out on the road, the steering feels nice and light, not that heavy steering that you're muscling around with a typical off-roader. Of course, this is in relative terms. If you were to compare it to Mahindra's own XCV700, for example, or cars like the uh, Creta and the Seltos that are also going to sort of linger in the same price bracket, there those monocoque chassis vehicles are going to feel much easier to drive compared to a body-on-frame like the Thar. But if you were to compare it to other body-on-frame vehicles around it, like its own 3 door variant or the Scorpio N, the Innova Crista, etc., it doesn't feel as difficult. The steering definitely feels a lot better. Now, in terms of the brakes, as for city speeds or even tight winding roads like these, the brakes work quite well. At triple digit speeds, however, on the highway, you will need a bit of a firm push. In terms of the noise insulation, it addresses that quite well too. For example, this car is running on all-terrain tyres, not highway tyres, but all-terrain tyres, and still you don't hear a lot of road noise creeping in. Similarly, the engines are also borrowed from the Scorpio N, but Mahindra has worked on the overall NVH levels. They have added a lot more sound deadening material and made sure that the powertrain noises aren't really filling into the cabin. Wind noises, despite its square shape, are also quite minimal. So, if you want to have a relatively silent experience inside the cabin, this body on frame does that quite well. That said, we noticed a faint whistling sound at various speeds during our drive, likely coming from the panoramic sunroof area. What's also carried over from the Scorpio N is the steering wheel, but it's only adjustable for tilt and not for reach. So that is a bit of a missed opportunity. I think that customization should have been allowed too. Now, the steering feel, like I told you, it feels much nicer than most of the other body-on-frame vehicles that you'll feel. However, if you remember, with the Scorpio and I had complained that there are quite a bit of pulsations that you feel from the suspension. You feel them in the steering. You sometimes feel them in the pedals as well when you're driving. And these are not really coming from the engine. These are the imperfections on the road that you sort of feel in the, these elements. And that continues even with the Thar. Now the suspension with the FDD or the frequency dependent damping, now, that is again a tech that is borrowed from the Scorpio N but tuned for the Thar, but you still have those pulsations, especially when you're driving at highway speeds, you will feel them a lot more. In terms of the chassis, however, while it is a ladder frame, the, the ladder itself is now an evolution of what we've seen with the Scorpio N. You can think of it to be 200 subsections welded together, so that allows them to sort of play around with the sizes of all the rings that are put together to make that ladder and that has allowed them to make the ladder lighter, 18% lighter than the Scorpio N's ladder and at the same time achieve better rigidity, achieve better handling from it as well. Like I said, the suspension is then tuned to match that. Now, In terms of the suspension itself, what you are getting is an independent double wishbone up front and you get a multi-link at the rear, a pentalink is what they call it and then you also have the watts linkage. The last time we saw that, that was with the Ford Endeavor. 
and we all know how the Ford Endeavor handles, right? It handles pretty well for its size. And that's the same thing with the Thar as well. Now, we are di driving on some tight winding roads and it behaves quite well. The body roll is well controlled. In relative terms, of course, compared to a monocoque chassis vehicle like the XV700, it's not going to feel as sharp when attacking the bends because that's again not the intent of this vehicle. But if you compare it to body on frame vehicles like the Scorpio in itself, which is a decent handler too for its size, this one definitely feels a lot better. Speaking of road tripping, there'll be tons of roof rack options like we've seen on the Thar 3 door. If you feel that the boot is inadequate, that is. For a family of five, the boot space is actually quite good. That is one thing that I was worried about. I'm glad they didn't try to cram in any jump seats here and make it a three-row. So if you still need a three-row, the Scorpio N is for you. This is excellent for five people and all of their luggage. Excellent boot. And as you would expect, that square shape also makes it a good wide aperture. And the loading lip is not too big. It's still a split tailgate. Now, let's hop into the rear seat. As you see, the doors, they open 90 degrees, right? So when you look at it from the outside, the door looks small, but it opens 90 degrees. So ingress and egress, not a problem. You just have to be mindful of your head. You also get this B-pillar mounted grab handle right here so that you can easily get in. And now in terms of the space, well, the knee room, pretty good. This is the kind of headroom that I get. I'm five feet eight. Sumit here is six feet tall. And foot space, not too bad either. Under thigh support is actually quite good. You can nicely stretch out and sit quite comfortably. And you can also recline the seat. So if you want to get a snooze, you can nicely recline. Enjoy that big panoramic roof. Now the roof doesn't open all the way back, but the frontal section which actually opens is almost 60% of the roof. So that still gives you that feeling of openness. Now why I'm pointing this out is because there is going to be no convertible version of the five-door car. You get a center armrest right here, you get two cup holders, you get your AC vents and a fast charging USB-C port. Now why I'm again pointing this out is because if you want to you know, simply sit back here, work, you can do that as well. You've got a 65 uh, watt charger uh, that is compatible with this uh, particular setup right now. So even your laptops and everything can work as long as they don't need particularly a three-pin charger. So overall, comfort is quite good. Visibility outside of the window, excellent. You have Isofix child seat mounts here. So even when you put your child seat here, your child is going to be able to enjoy a really good view outside of the windows. So unlike the Scorpio N where the belt line is quite high, this one is going to give you a lot more visibility. The rear seats comfortably fit two adults and a child, but squeezing three adults might be a bit tight. What I also like is the contouring of the seats. Now, like the front seats, these are nice and supportive. The contouring may look very flat to you when you actually look at the seats, but they hold you in place quite nicely and the shoulder room is actually quite broad. You also get adjustable headrest at both the ends. The one in the center is going to be a fixed cob. But overall, like I said, the visibility is so nice. There's a sense of roominess and even the seats add to that with the kind of seating experience that they give you. And while the car does rock about quite a bit, we were on slight bit of off-road sections here. You don't really feel claustrophobic in here. You don't really feel motion sick in here because the airiness, the visibility that you get even from the rear seats really helps that cause. It makes you feel nice and comfortable back in here. Now, while I did complain about those pulsations that you feel at triple digit speeds on the highway, the ride quality is actually quite good. We are driving on some really poor road conditions right now. You can probably hear it in my voice. These are estate roads, completely broken. You can see the articulation probably. Hopefully the cameras are picking that up. And the ride quality isn't bone jarring at all. I quite like it. And that is exactly the point of this vehicle. Because this is a body on frame, it gives you that additional rigidity, that additional uh, strength to withstand such bad road conditions compared to a monocoque chassis vehicle, something like the XCV700 or the Seltos Preta, etc. So if your primary criteria is going to be ride comfort, well, this is going to definitely top it off. And that's despite the car rolling on 19-inch wheels with a design supposedly inspired by the sign of horns hand gesture. Because even the wheel rims want to say rock on while you scratch them in the wilderness. The bottom line is, even the bigger tha makes fodder of the potholes and bad roads. And with the same panache 
as its three door sibling, if not better. Even at speed, you don't get that feeling that you're being juggled around, thrown around. You know, I do get that feeling in the Scorpio and sometimes if the driver is driving at speed or undulated surfaces, you get that bouncy feel inside the Scorpio N. That is very well controlled in the Thar. You don't get that feeling at all. Never do I feel that I'm going to bounce and hit my head against the roof or anything. You know, it's nice and composed. Even for taller passengers, it shouldn't be a problem. Sumit was in the back seat a little while back on similar roads and he had no complaints either. The suspension is also quite silent. It doesn't thud through all the corners. It soaks in all of that quite nicely. So it doesn't give you those you know, butt clenching moments where you're like, ah, it's going to thud again, it's probably going to hit again, probably my family is going to hate me again. All of that is not happening. It is really an exceptionally good ride here in the back seat. Now, as for the rest of the experience, well, here in Kochi, it is pretty humid and thankfully in the cabin, it's nice and cool. Those rear AC vents work quite well. In the front, the AC vents, the ventilated seats, all of that works quite well to keep the occupants nice and cozy and happy and well-regulated in terms of the temperature. And adding to that is the sound quality. Now, the sound from that Harman Kardon audio unit that they have, nine speakers on the top end variant, etc., it's really quite good. You don't have the roof-mounted uh, speakers like you have with the two-door Thar. They are roof-mounted, but right towards the rear. But the way the speakers have been placed, the tweeters have been placed, it creates a nice surround sound experience back here as well as in the front. The Thar Rocks isn't just about cool air conditioning and a rocking sound system. It boasts a touchscreen with wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, though we couldn't get that part to cooperate. It also packs 360-degree cameras. And like a Mercedes-Benz, there's a transparent bonnet, or oh well, a transparent car feature that shows you what's under the car as you crawl forward. A lifesaver when off-roading solo or when tackling those fabled potholes during our monsoons. Plus, the standard safety tech is stacked up quite nicely. AX variants even offering level 2 ADAS, though not as refined as the one that we saw on the XUV700. To make life easier, there is of course a 360 degree camera and there is also ADAS. Now the ADAS is a little bit too intrusive. Now you will not spot the radar unit anywhere. So what it's using essentially is one radar and one camera uh, to do all of its ADAS functionality. But that radar unit is not easily visible. Now someone happened to mention that it is hiding behind the bumper and I'm not sure if that works that way. but. If that is how it is, well, that's good news because even when you're off-roading, the chances of damaging the radar unit are not going to be too high. And I'm sure a lot of you out there are going to swap that Mahindra grill for a Jeep look-alike. And even that is not going to compromise any of the radar tech. That ADAS behavior definitely quite intrusive and it can take you off guard, especially in places like Kerala where the roads are really narrow but the lane markings are nice and clear. It reads all of that quite nicely but you are every now and then sort of forced to uh, meander out of your lane and every time that happens the vehicle just tries to pull you back in. It will also have those judders coming into the steering, into uh, the powertrain to sort of warn you that oh you are you know deviating away from your line, all of that. And that can take you off guard and that can become overwhelming at times, especially if you are driving on tight roads like these with a lot of incoming traffic. Now some of that bully behavior that the Thar drivers feel entitled to is because of the kind of commanding view that the vehicle offers. And that doesn't change with the Thar rocks. You're still getting a nice commanding view of the road, almost as tall, if not better, as the Scorpio N. And in terms of the visibility, it's excellent. It's not just the height, but also the visibility that you get. You see the entire bonnet in front of you. You see those little notches around the bonnet, and that gives you a good judgment of where the front end of the car is. And despite the longer length compared to the Thar three-door, negotiating traffic, negotiating tight bends, negotiating tight parking spaces, it's not a problem at all. It is a refined beast to say the least. And if you aren't necessarily after sharp, modern and aerodynamic designs, the Fido Thar can be the do-it-all family SUV for you in the true sense of the word. But will families accept the SUV from Mahindra as the car for their single car garage? Remains to be seen. Now, the car that we are driving right now is not the 4x4. This is the rear-wheel driven version. And 
that is i think going to be the more popular option right given its pricing and everything and not everyone is going to go off roading with it and our past experience also tells us that even the rear wheel driven thar is pretty good at tackling most of the rough stuff that the 4x4 will do it's only the extreme bits where you need roll control and uh, where you need the lockable diffs and all of that only there it's going to be the big difference that is where it's all going to be evident for most of the driving that most of the people are going to do with the thar rocks you know the 4x2 or the rear wheel driven version is just going to work fine and that's the one that we are driving right now so again around the bends the agility is really good you don't get that understeery feel that you get with the 4x4 version this one feels a little bit easier to drive in fact out of the 18 trims on offer only 4 come with the 4x4 powertrain highlighting that the three door thar variant is likely to remain the choice for off road enthusiasts The Fido rocks slots between the Scorpio N and the Jeep Compass in price, but outshines them both, offering more features than the Scorpio N and better space and after-sales support than the Compass. It looks like and is a Wrangler Sahara on a budget, and while it may not really affect the Creta or the Seltos in outright sales, it will carve out its own niche and challenge the Harrier and the Safari. Now, whether you enjoy a uh, outdoorsy lifestyle like this, you want to carry all your camping gear with you and your family with you while you're doing that, this is the car for you. If you have an estate and you want to drive up and down those estate roads, tight roads, etc., every now and then, this is still the car for you. You live in the mountains, you have to go up and down those hairpins every now and then. Also, battle the chances of a landslide every now and then. Again, this is the car for you. So if you have that adventure lifestyle and you want to carry your family with you all the time or at least once in a while in comfort this is still the car for you and even if you don't have that adventure lifestyle but you just simply want to cast that image of yourself that you are an outdoorsy adventure oriented person but you don't want your family to feel the brunt of your passion this is still the car for you I was speaking to someone at Mahindra and they happened to tell me this is not just a thar with two more doors this is a thar with doors two more and i think i quite agree with that this certainly is one of those and here's hoping we encounter nicer drivers behind the wheel of this car now it's your turn to be nice please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and don't forget to give us a like and a share mm.